Hey guys, Laura here from What Laura Likes. So today we are doing a collab on the book, The Anti-Mary Exposed, Rescuing the Culture from Toxic Femininity. Femininity. So a few Catholic ladies here on YouTube thought it would be fun to read the book and then to break down chapter by chapter um, some of the main topics from this book. I'm not gonna like rehash the entire chapter for you, but I think I'm gonna pull out a few key points, points from my chapter in particular, which was chapter three, I believe. And the other ladies are gonna choose different top uh, chapters. So the playlist down below is gonna cover, I don't know, about five, four or five chapters, and I'll give you an idea of what's inside this book, probably teach you some things that maybe you haven't thought about before, and then maybe encourage you to go out and get yourself your own copy of The Anti-Mary Exposed. Warning right now, this is kind of a heavy book. There's a lot of stuff about the demonic, there's a lot of stuff about um, our culture today, and why it is the way that it is, why lesbianism is on the rise, why goddess worship's on the rise, why abortion is on the rise, and it all has to do with the anti-Mary, but of course, we always have hope because Mary is the answer. So before we get started, let's say St. Michael the Archangel prayer because we are going to be talking about angels and demons and that kind of thing. And we want to start with a St. Michael prayer to protect us so that nothing too wonky happens um, while addressing this kind of thing. So, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so I'm going to jump around chapter 3 a bit, but the first thing I want to start with is what Father Ritberger said. I absolutely love that he's quoted in this book. So he says, remember he's an exorcist, ironically, for all the adult adulation given to Lilith by radical feminists, Father Ripper explains that demons are not female, but only appear as such. He added, demons do not have a gender, but always appear as male, except when they are trying to seduce in some manner. It is a him that acts like a her. So all this movement, this wicked movement, this goddess worship movement, these women are actually worshiping demons that are male. Like right there. That's huge. I don't even know if I need to say anything else because I think that's probably enough to like sit back and think about a bit. But we're going to go further. So let's talk about who these demons are. Um, these demons that have been around and been warned of for a very long time, but now are being embraced as something cool. And and the goddess movement, this embracing of um, like Wiccan and, and these god goddesses, which like I said are demons, um, started in the 1970s with this idea of um, women's being divine. And um, I don't know if you guys watch like Rick and Morty, but they had that one episode where they go to the world that's all ruled by women. And it's all like, you know, my spirit blesses your spirit. And or I don't know, whatever, I can't remember now. But you know, the males were all like just these monsters that were only used for procreation. And then only the women were, um, you know, so cultured and, and elevated and wise and all these things. And so that's the myth of the society ran by women, right? Is that we will have peace and love and harmony and it's only the patriarchy that makes things so evil with their reason and their logic and their truth. Um, when of course, that's not the way God designed the world. He didn't design women first. He designed man first and women came after as a helpmate. And women, woman is very good and we are necessary for Adam's salvation, just like he's necessary for our salvation. But societies that were ran by women, they, there's no evidence factually that they were more peaceful or more harmonious or more advanced than the societies that were by men. And really women aren't even like meant to hold those positions. Not that they can't, but that that wasn't really the design. Um, and Father Ripperger has a really wonderful video about like the roles of male and female and also, you know, this, how the sins of Adam and Eve touch on the ways we are today. And so I will link those videos down below because I think that they're very, very valuable, especially as a wife and mother, having listened to them and kind of like being able to figure out where those sins of Eve have come into my own life. And they're definitely present in the feminist movement today. Oh, and then the other thing I want to mention is, you know, the Friends, I was watching that recently, 
and they had one where they read like the goddess within book and they were all talking about like you know he's stealing my sunshine or I can't remember right it was so silly but you know it was this goddess thing and even this book talks about how Jennifer Aniston recently is was quoted as saying that she feels like her best when she's in a goddess circle with her friends and it's just all nonsense it's literally nonsense it's not spirituality it's not anything to do with God and yet these you know it's cool it's hip it's fun it's it's you know we are women here as roar kind of thing and we weren't we weren't meant to roar white ladies I mean unless you're Joan of Arc and even though I don't think she's roared it's pretty much a mishmash of pagan religions, sexual liberation, and misanthropy. Um, and misanthropy means like a hatred towards, what is it, I wrote down, a hatred or mistrust in humankind, which um, this book talks a lot about. The, the women who started the feminist movement had a lot of that, unfortunately, from their, um, their rough childhoods. Okay, so let's see. The next thing I want to do is touch on a couple of these main um, demons that are considered like a hip word now so like Jezebel right so Jezebel is a character in the Bible and she is terrible she's Ahab's wife and she has all the true prophets killed she has all of these false seer, um, soothsayers or however you say it um, instilled instead and then ultimately she has this her husband wants a vineyard that this man doesn't want to sell so that they have him killed and Ahab repents and Jezebel doesn't. Ultimately, Jezebel is fed to the dogs. That same spirit of Jezebel was seen in Salome, who is the wife of Herod, who is the one who had John the Baptist beheaded and, and fed on a, and presented on a platter. The second one we want to talk about is Lilith. Now, when I was growing up, Lilith Fair was like all the rage. And I think, I don't know if my mom got tickets, but you know, Lilith didn't have any kind of scary connotation it was just like oh yeah Lilith like that's just this pretty name um and of course we I laugh because apparently during Hurricane um Harvey there was a Lilith fund that helped get help, helped women procure abortions during Hurricane Harvey like that's somehow a necessity in a hurricane situation is to procure abor abortions um so I want so the word lullaby actually means beware of Lilith. Now Lilith is a very, very, very old demon. She is said to be the wife of Satan um, or a blood-sucking de night demon and al also the patroness of abortion. And so her legends actually predate Genesis. So she preys upon in um, infants and pregnant women and she instills just chaos, destruction, and ungodliness. And Isaiah 34, 14 actually <laughs> mentions her by name. Um, and then the book goes on to talk about how like the hookup culture, sex in the city, going through men in that way, kind of like preying on men and then spitting them out. That's the demon um, of Lilith. Whereas Jezebel, the spirit seeks to undermine authority structure, causes murmuring, attacks right order and governance within families, communities and organizations. So the ancient stories warned against Jezebel and Lilith and then of course and these other and other demons that are similar. And it's amazing that these names now are considered like cool and hip and like, you know, part of this this goddess movement that's completely false. And it's sad that these warnings have have gone away and that people are no longer even aware of the history here. I mean, the true history of the fact that these warnings existed and have been throughout our civilization. Um but the good news is that instead of needing to just be warned at this point about the evil, we can also now through God, through God's mother, through Mary, have a, a role model to emulate. And so that's the juxtaposition is that all of these traits of Jezebel and Lilith that are so incredibly harmful, that are so much the sins of Eve, like I said here, um, Jezebel's spirit includes confusion, intimidation, draining the opposition through argumentation, refusing facts, changing the subject when proven wrong, blaming others for her faults, use of pseudo friendships to acquire favors and accrue power, and eventually conquering the opposition through destruction and or betrayal. And then, like King Ahab, Adam, Herod, and others, men under the spell of the Jezebel tend to give way to her cunning while becoming passively open to her victim vicious whims. And then you have 
Lilith, and Will Lilith has been portrayed by um, Jadis, the White Witch, by C.S. Lewis. Um, Michelangelo drew her as a temptress in the Garden of Eden. Exorcists warn of her and rituals about histor abound historically to protect against her. Right, like I said about the Lord Lullaby, and like she's been known to seduce men in, her, in, in their sleep. And the Bible quote is, Wild cats shall meet desert beasts, satyrs shall call to one another. There, sh there shall the Lilith repose and find for herself a place of rest. It's clear that Isaiah and those to whom he is writing are aware of who Lilith is, and that she is not a sign of God's favor. I want to end by saying that, and I want to end, well, I want to end by recommending this book to get a fuller sense of what's going on in society today. This chapter also talks about Madonna doing a satanic ritual at the Super Bowl. So, which, so then when what happened this year at the Super Bowl happened, I wasn't surprised because I would never let my kids watch Super Bowl. Most of society does not understand spiritual warfare, they don't understand the demonic, they don't listen to exorcists like Father Ripperger, and they're just unaware. And so I do think that we have some sense of duty to become aware. No, we don't need to study this stuff to an extent. There's so much good, there's so much hope out there. We need to, we need to focus on you know, becoming closer to God, emptying ourselves of sin, letting God fill us with truth, light, life. But this is a reality, and especially if you have children, and the goddess movement is just very sneakily stuck in to our life, our, life, our society. And so it's important to protect your children to understand that when they come across these things, they need to understand that it is from the demonic, it's not something from God. And so that's the ultimate message of this video, is just to be aware you can get the anti mirror exposed on Audible, which is how I did it. I suggest not listening to it um, when you are wanting to have kind of an uplifting day because it is a heavy, it's a heavy topic. I just touched the surface of this book, really. Um, and so definitely check out the other videos as well to see what they have to say. Yeah, it's just something, like I said, it, it was definitely a life-changing book. And I think the, the, the chapters that come later on about the true mother fruit and content, understanding Mary's beauty, there is imitating Mary, there's such hope in the back of this book, and there's instructions for us as women to not be the Jezebels and the Liliths, to, to really embrace our role as Mary did, and to look to her for what virtue, true virtue looks like, and also she's the path to Jesus, and so the more we can emulate Mary, the more we can love Mary, the more we can strive to teach our children to respond to Mary's their their role model um the closer we will all become to Christ which is the ultimate point so we can get to heaven so we can get out of this exile this exile is hard this exile is not where we're supposed to be meant to be it is a race so with that you guys I hope you're having a fruitful Lent so far God bless very beautiful day continue to know God love God and do God's will let me know down in the comments if any of this stuff is like whoa or if you want to talk more about anything else if you have a book suggestion Whatever it is you want to talk about, put down in the comments, and I will talk to you guys again real soon. Make sure you check out the playlist to, to touch on the other chapters that were covered through this collab. God bless. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.